This is a copper chloride electrolytic cell. You can see here we have a power source in the background and we have connected this electrode here to the negative terminal of that power source, that direct current power source. The positive terminal is not yet connected to the power source, but we're going to connect it now. And so when we connect that to the power source there, then current can flow because here we have an electrolyte, it's copper chloride solution, and that can conduct electricity because it's an ionic solution. And it doesn't just conduct electricity, it also allows a redox reaction to occur. Let's discuss what is happening here and then we'll see the results. This electrode here becomes positively charged due to being attached to the positive terminal over there of the power source and this electrode becomes negatively charged. This electrolyte contains positive and negative ions. The copper chloride inside the solution dissociates, meaning it breaks up into separate ions, each ion surrounded by water. That's what happens during dissolving of ionic substances. Now, the positive ions can be thought of as having two holes in them. That's what my picture there shows them as. Meaning, they have two fewer electrons than what they have protons. That's why they have a charge of 2 plus these positive ions, these copper positive ions, Cu2 plus. The chloride ions inside the solution are negatively charged because each one has gained an electron. So it's shown in the picture as having one electron added on. So it has one more electron than what it has protons. Because of that, these ions are attracted to the oppositely charged electrode. The positively charged copper ions are attracted to the negative electrode. The negatively charged chloride ions are attracted to the positive electrode. Opposite charges attract. Now when the copper ions get to that negatively charged electrode, they have electrons forced upon them. In a way that's against their will we could say because Substances are stablest when they are in their ionic state because then they have a noble gas configuration in their electron configuration. But because the copper ion has been attracted to the negative electrode, it doesn't really have a choice anymore. It has to accept the extra electrons that are lying there on that electrode which made it to be negative, pumped there by the power source. And by so doing, by accepting those electrodes, that blue copper ion, Cu2+, plus, gets changed into brown solid copper. We say that it is reduced. Reduction is the gain of electrons. Copper ions, Cu2+, plus ions, have been reduced to copper atoms and we can see there at that electrode there that that is indeed the case. Can you see the deposit of brown copper on this electrode? We'll lift it out to make it clearer. And just bring it in front and there you can see against the white there's a brown precipitate and that's a deposit of copper, the metal copper, copper atoms which are brown in color. Meanwhile, at the other electrode, at the positive electrode, the chloride ions are attracted there because the chloride ions are negatively charged and they're attracted to the positively charged electrode. And when they get there, they have their excess electrons sucked off them, changing them from chloride, Cl minus, into chlorine Cl, neutral chlorine atoms. Neutral chlorine atoms are not very stable, 
So they find another neutral chlorine atom to bond covalently with to make chlorine molecule Cl2. And that forms bubbles of gas. Perhaps you can notice now and then it's visible, a few bubbles of gas there. But may, maybe it's more noticeable that we had a piece of litmus paper at that electrode. And it used to be blue, like we saw there on the, the right. And then it got changed into red because chlorine dissolves in water to form an acid, hydrogen chloride. But then it also lost its color, the litmus, lost its color at many places. And that's because chlorine is a bleach. We say that the chloride ions are oxidized at this electrode, at this positive electrode. Oxidation means the loss of electrons. So they've had electrons taken away from them. These chloride ions have had their electrons plucked off them to join in the external circuit and, and move around there. And so the chloride has been oxidized to chlorine. Oxidation always happens at the anode. So this here is what we call the anode. And notice it's anions which get attracted to the anode. Anions are negatively charged ions. The chloride ions are attracted there. Chloride ions are negative, they're anions. And the anions get attracted to the anode in this case. And oxidation happens at the anode. This electrode here, the negatively charged electrode, is the cathode because reduction happens there. And reduction always happens at the cathode. And cations are attracted to this cathode. Cations are positively charged ions. And here we have these copper ions, which are cations, positively charged ions, being attracted to the cathode. And when they get there, being reduced.